Hi, in this video we are going to look at 10 ways you can use the scavenger hunt clues from Corre en Circulos in your Spanish classes. Hey, it's Ashley aka Senior Spanish where I provide easy to use resources to save you time and energy while you're lesson planning for your students. If you're new here, make sure to click that subscribe button and links to everything that I mentioned will be down in the description box below. We're going to talk about this scavenger hunt style game, how to play, and then nine more ways you can reuse the clues to get in more review and practice with your students in different ways. So first off, what is Corre en Circulos? Corre en Circulos is an activity to review or practice material with your students in a game style setup. If you've played I Have Who Has or Chain Reaction, then you probably kind of already know how to play this game. So first, Students are gonna start at any page around the room. They're going to read a prompt at the bottom of the starting page. Then they're going to record their answer to the prompt on their answer sheet or on a blank sheet of paper, whichever way works. Then they're going to walk around the room until they find the answer they've recorded on another sheet of paper hung somewhere on the walls. They'll look at the prompt on the bottom of the new page, write their answer, and then continue until they get all the way back to where they started. So let's look at an example. If a student starts at the sheet that says 8.30, they read the prompt that says es la una. On their sheet of paper, they're gonna write one o'clock. Then they're going to walk around until they find the sheet of paper that has one o'clock at the top of it. They'll look at the little text underneath, which is their new prompt, and they will record their answer to that question. And then they'll continue around the room until they find their answer on a different sheet of paper. It works like a scavenger hunt as they move around the room, answering the clues and finding their answer as they keep going until they solve the puzzle. Have you ever done a scavenger hunt with your classes? Comment below, yes or no. So how long does it take to play this game? That kind of depends on a few things. How well do your students know the material? Are you doing this as a review kind of towards the end of the chapter or is this more for practice at the beginning of the chapter shortly after you've introduced this concept? Are your students careful or do they rush and make silly mistakes that then cause them to have to go back, retrace their answers and figure out where they made a mistake? Because if they make a mistake, it breaks the whole thing and they, they basically have to start over or at least go back until they figure out what they did which takes them a lot longer. In general, I usually plan for 35 to 40 minutes of a class period. Again, there's some, you know, cushion there. Once they finish the activity, they turn in their answer sheet and I always have a fast finisher ready for them. I like to do something related to the skill, whether it's a puzzle, a maze game, or maybe just another version, like a mini version of Corre, which we'll talk about in a second. I do have an entire video on fast finisher activity ideas that I'll link for you here on the screen, just in case you need a few more ideas. Okay, let's look at nine more ways you can use these clues with your students to play different versions of this game. As much as I love this game, we can't play it the exact same way every single chapter because the kids just wouldn't be up for that, right? They don't wanna do the same thing over and over again, and neither do I really. So here's nine more ways we can mix it up. One, mini puzzle. You take the half sheets with the prompts and you just print them smaller. I have a tutorial for how to do that here. It's really, really easy, it takes me less than a minute. And then they just do them small on their desk and they make a circle puzzle. Second, I have Who Has. If you've ever played this game, it's a verbal call out game. So students have a couple cards on their desk. They say, I have prompt who has and somebody else is going to answer and you wanna go around the room. Some people like to do this timing their classes and racing class periods against each other. Use smaller sets of the puzzles for a station activity. My weather set is a perfect option for this because there's only nine cards, so it takes them much less time to do rather than a full 25 question scavenger hunt. And that weather game is a free download. I'll make sure to link down in the description box below. The fourth option to do is a race, which is pretty self-explanatory. It's the same setup, but you just say, we're gonna do this fast, go. Option number five is a mini race. Also go fast, but use the mini versions of the puzzles so students are all racing with that version right in front of them. I often do that if I have a student who happens to be in crutches or in a wheelchair or something like that where running around the room in a race isn't exactly inclusive for that class period, we would just do the mini version at their desks instead and it works great. Option number six is to do the digital version. This is just drag and drop with Google Slides. This is also the version that I post in Google Classroom for just in case I have students who are absent the day we do a regular scavenger hunt in my class. It's a great backup to have. Or if you need to do a sub plan and you didn't have time to print and explain how to play the scavenger hunt game, just post the digital version, it's way easier. Option number seven is a relay race. I love this one. You split up your students into groups 
and each group has a color of card. So you might have blue group, red group, purple group, and they start on one side of the room. One student runs, picks a card, comes back, and they show their team member. They have to figure out what the answer is going to be, and then the next team member is gonna run and pick up the correct answer and come back. Option number eight is called beat the clock, and this is a lot like the mini puzzle race, except you're gonna make the time shorter and shorter and shorter. So you might start with five minutes, let's see who can finish the puzzle in five minutes. Okay, now we're gonna see who can finish the puzzle in three minutes, who can finish in two, who can finish one, right? You can decrease the time as necessary depending on where your students' skills are at and how fast they're going, but the gist is that they're trying to go faster and faster and faster as you decrease the time. And the last option, number nine, is called the hands and the brain. And this one's kind of wacky, but I love it. You have students working in pairs. So one student is the hands of the operation, the other student is the brain. So you have one student standing behind and kind of looking over and saying, okay, grab that piece, it goes there. And then the student who's the hands is the one who's actually moving them. And you can set the expectations with your students where you know the hands can't disagree, or you can set the expectation with the students where they can discuss, but only one student can move move. Either way, there's a lot of little variations you can do with that one, but it's lots of fun to have them working in pairs together. There you've got it, 10 ways you can use this scavenger hunt style game with your students. If you want to try out a set of Corre and Circulos for yourself, make sure you head down to the description box below where I have linked a free set for you to try. And if this video is helpful for you, make sure you give it a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and ring that bell so you get notified of all new content that I create for you in the future. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!